Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'll be doing a slightly different type of video. I'll be doing a lens review. I don't normally do lens reviews, but I've recently purchased this lens for some of my macro photography and time lapses that I'll be doing soon on my gardening channel. And I've noticed that this lens has only come out in the last week and nobody else seems to have done a review yet on YouTube, so I thought I'd go ahead and make a quick review. And just a disclaimer, I haven't had any affiliation with Micah or the company and this is not a sponsored review. Also, I'm not a lens expert or somebody who uh, does reviews normally, but I do use quite a lot of cameras and um, and lenses in my YouTube production. So this is the Micah lens, it's a 60mm f2.8 lens. Now the thing that really stands out about this is the price of it. So brand new, I got this shipped straight from China for 100, so just under £160. I think the price varies a lot because it's, it's priced in dollars and when you go on the website every day it seems to change with uh, whatever the, the exchange rate is. But this is the Micah lens, as I say, it's a macro lens. And at that price, for the specs that it has, that's really quite impressive. So we'll, we'll see if it does live up to the reputation with the, with the sharpness, and I'll do some tests later on. This is the box anyway, this is how it arrived. As you can see, pretty standard uh, box. I, I've had a Micro lens before. This is what most of their lenses look like. They come with these kind of white boxes. Inside, there's pretty much no frills. You've just got some reasonable packaging, just um, a bit of part, like kind of like foam to insulate it. Comes with a small warranty card as well and it also comes with a certification that it has uh, been, been quality checked. Now there has been some talk about this possibly being a rebranded uh, TT Artisan 60mm 2.8 lens because it does look pretty similar. Um, I did a bit of investigation online, I can't see any link with Micah and TT Artisans but interestingly it did come with this card which kind of gives away uh, what make what Micah is. Micah is a, a company which is probably owned by this conglomerate of um, of companies and interestingly it does include um, some rifle manufacturing companies which make scopes um, so I don't actually know if this has any kind of uh, contact or link with the Chinese government and their military but that's just an interesting thing I found out is that the, the company that, that owns this or as part of the conglomerate also makes rifle uh, rifle scopes. So here it is anyway, it comes in just a weird kind of like plastic pouch, as I say, there isn't much to it, not really much documentation with it either. Here, Here's the lens itself and as with the other Micah lenses it feels really nice and actually quite premium to, to hold to begin with. It is a nice solid metal um, lens, nice black colour as well, really nice kind of matte finish, does feel quite nice and premium. It does lay it down with a lens cap, very cheap and plastic, plasticky, it doesn't clip in at all, just kind of falls off. Um, it probably would hold up okay for a while, but I feel like after maybe a few months of use that will get quite loose and I wouldn't really hold on too well, very cheap and plasticky. Same with the rear cap as well, just a standard Micah rear cap, which is very loose and plasticky. Just to note, I'll be using this on my Micro Four Thirds camera. I've only got a G6 Micro Four Thirds camera, so that'll be the one that I'll be using for reviewing this. But it has got a metal lens mount. It's not weather sealed in any way, but um, it is nice that it has a metal lens mount. And generally, it does feel like quite a high quality product. But things start to go downhill uh, once you start looking at the focusing. I'll show you the, the aperture first though. The aperture ring is really nice, very smooth operation as well. You can see it goes from 2.8 to f22 although uh, with a micro four lens I wouldn't really be going past 8 just because you get a lot of diffraction starting to come into the into play then so probably only use it to f8 but you can see it has got quite a nice aperture ring. It's very smooth and easy to use. Um, it, it is unclicked as well which has its advantages and disadvantages. It's unclicked so for photography it's not the best because you don't really know which aperture you're getting. You just kind of have to guess it's somewhere around one of those apertures just by lining it up. So if you want to take repeated shots uh, that, that are always exactly the same you really don't want to touch the ring. You want to set it up again. You have to pretty much set it and then take all the photos you're going to take because to try and set it up again exactly the same position is going to be a bit tricky. But then if you're doing video, which isn't really something that most people do with macro lenses, it has the advantage that it's not clicked, so it's nice and smooth and you can do some better uh, videography with it. But you can see it's got a nice, I think it's a nine bladed iris and it really is nice and smooth so hopefully we'll get some nice bokeh and we'll be looking at that later on in the review. But when it does, yeah, a bit of a letdown is I would say the the focusing ring. This is it here, I don't know if you can, I'll, I'll put it up to the microphone and turn it but it has a kind of a 
almost like a grinding feeling. It's nice and stiff, so you're not going to accidentally knock it and it's going to, uh, you're not going to lose focus. So you're going to put it, being nice and stiff, you can easily pull it to where you need it and then let go. And it's going to stay in that position. You don't. You, I'm not going to easily knock this out of position. Put it that way. It's really quite a stiff um, focusing ring. Now this might loosen off over time with more use, but at the moment it feels very stiff and a bit gritty. So that's really where I say the quality seems to be let down a bit. It just doesn't feel quite right. I'll now hold it up to the microphone and turn it around a bit, and you can hopefully hear that kind of gr almost grinding noise that it has. So I have some other micro lenses that don't do that, but this micro lens does. It does, as I say, it doesn't feel particularly nice. But otherwise, quite a nice looking lens. As I say, it does look quite similar to the TT Artisans lens of uh, which is also a 60mm f2.8 macro. There's a few differences. The focusing numbers on here do seem to be slightly different positionings as with the estimated focal range. So I think it could have to be a different lens. Also the uh, the texture on the focusing ring is quite different. There's also a few other differences such as when you look inside here this kind of black section is different. I think it's more textured with the TTR sand one. So I feel like it could actually be a different lens. I don't think it's a rebranded lens, um, even though it looks pretty much identical. I think they've just kind of copied a similar idea. I don't have a uh, TT Artisan's lens to compare it with, but um, as I say, I, f from what I can gather, it's probably not a rebranded lens. It's just a very similar kind of copied lens. So one thing to note with this is it's a micro lens, and so you can zoom in really close and get great macro shots. You can also focus out, and you should be able to use this almost like a portrait lens. But looking at the focusing ring, and we'll, we'll, we'll try it out in the field to see what it's actually like, I think that would be almost impossible or very difficult to get any kind of focus. So looking here, you can see we've got 17 and a half centimeters there for the closest, closest focusing. And then just to go a few centimetres to 20 centimetres, that is a huge amount of pull on the focusing ring. So that's absolutely fantastic. That should make it really easy to focus a few millimetres at a time just by doing quite a large throw on the focusing ring. So that's really handy. And it continues, you can see, up to 30 centimetres away, you've got a massive gap again. So anything between 30 centimetres and 17 and a half, you've got a huge focus pull there, which makes focusing at macro level really nice and easy. Next, it's 20 centimeters up to half a meter. Again, it's a bit, it, 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 it's a fair bit of focus throw, but a lot smaller. And then this is where things get really tight. You've got from half a meter to a meter, you've only got a tiny bit of movement there. And then from a meter to infinite, you've, well, it's hard to show in this because it doesn't really show it very easily. We'll find out when I put it on the camera. But you can see there, that is all the movement you got from a meter to infinite. So that's gonna make it almost impossible to focus anything that's not under a meter away. So it'll be interesting to see how that does. But anyway, that's the first look at the, the Mica lens, the build quality and the, the appearance. It does feel really quite good for something that is so cheap. We'll see what it's like, but for now, it does feel like it's really quite nice quality for the price of it. So we'll now go in and have a look at how this actually handles and how it works on the camera with the optics. And hopefully we'll get some nice macro shots with this. So that's the macro lens now on my G6 camera. So it does actually fit quite nicely in the G6. It's a good size for it. It's a fully manual lens. There's no electrical contacts that go in to the camera, the camera can't communicate with the lens at all. So that means there's, there's absolutely no autofocus, there's no uh, control over the focus or, or the aperture size using the camera, it's all manual. And so there's, yeah, as I say, no focus and there's no stabilization either. So if you're using this handheld, it's a very long focal length uh, to be using handheld really, um, especially at micro level, because once you get down to like macro level, really tight in, the wobble is pretty insane. If I pick this up, it's on the tripod now, um, but. If I pick this up, it will just be shaken all over the place. I, try, I will try a little bit of hands-free um, macro photography later in the garden, but I think, for, to be honest, this kind of lens, it really doesn't lend itself to good hands-free macro. If I was to, to want a good hands-free macro lens, I'd probably go for the equivalent in the Olympus, which has similar optics being a 60mm f2.8 lens but you've got the ultra focus and that gives you the lovely option to have um, focus stacking so that's one thing with this you can't have focus stacking automatically with the camera so if you're picturing things that are moving that'll make it quite difficult here in a studio type setup and you can just manually focus that's not a problem you can still do loads of macro photography but uh, if you want to do macro photography out and about this would be quite a difficult lens to do it with but anyway here it is uh, I'll just do a few macro shots now. We're quite a distance away at the moment, so we're not in the in the macro realm. So I'm going to bring the camera closer in. I've got several other things to do uh, to video. As I say, I'm a gardening channel, so most of what I'll be filming will be plants. So I've got lots of uh, little plants here and there, which I'd like to ch try and uh, do some macro shots on. 
and we'll see how it does. Um, but it's definitely quite uh, quite zoomed in. As I say, it's a micro four thirds lens. So it's, although it's a 60 mil lens, the equivalent is 120 mil. It is like a short telephoto lens. Now I'll show you the aperture whilst I'm in the video mode and not too far away from things. I'm not too close up. So this is uh, 2.8 and as you see, as I stop down the aperture, you'll notice the uh, the focal plane will get much wider. Lots more things in focus. But um, as this is a G6 camera going down to f22, it just doesn't have enough light to record video. But I could take um, definitely take photos with a long exposure on there. So. As I say, it's nice for videos. I've got it on automatic um, exposure at the moment, which is why it's compensating. Uh, you can probably see it compensating in little stops and starts. But if you were to do this on a full manual video, you wouldn't have that sudden change. It'd be quite nice for videography if you were wanting to film something at macro range. So as I say, I'll go in close now and I'll get some macro shots with this. So we're trying it on this plant first of all. So this is also this is the plant known as Mind Your Business or, or Baby's Tears. The Latin name is Silly Rolia. Solularolii. This one has incredibly small leaves. What I'll be using for, for scale on most of these things is I'll be using the ballpoint pen. So it's one to one macro, so it does get quite close, but not as close as some macros can get. Here is the head of a ballpoint pen, just to give you an idea of the scale that we're working with at the moment. So here we are at the macro level. The, um, the distance is fairly close, but it's not too bad. It's probably, we're talking about 15 centimeters, something like that. So we can get quite close to the subject, but we're not so close that we're getting problems with trying to get enough light in there to get the, the picture. And I'll do a bit of focus pulling now to show you um, what it's like. And I can, I can go really slow if I want. So I'll go, I'll go to full macro now which would be this shot here. Uh, see if I can get any cl close enough for that. And then I'm just gonna very slowly twist it. And because the, it does have such a fr long throw on the, on the focus, I can really do minor adjustments very slowly. So that's me just constantly turning it at a constant rate. And you can see there, just a few millimeters can be easily focused in and out. So that's really nice to do. This is at f2.8, by the way. I'll just stop it down to, uh, to around about f Eight, which is probably where I, I as far as I'd go obviously I need a lot more light for this but you can see there you got a lot more focus in focus there now there is a little bit of focus pulling so you can see the image does zoom in and out a bit which could be a little bit of an issue if doing a bit of a focus focus stacking not a major problem software should be able to resolve it still but you can see there there is a bit of focus pulling but I go to f2.8 for most of this because that's going to be a lot easier for, for the camera to manage. So I'll go now onto a cedar, sedum acre. This is a very, very small succulent. You can see here, we're not quite at one to one macro here, but you can see there you can really pull in and out quite nicely. So the first few shots I'm going to show you here are some of the plants I've taken in my garden. The first one here is of an ornamental kale plant. This is a handheld shot. You can see I've got a quite nice and focused water droplet there. The second picture is of some moss, again a handheld shot. Now I found I was really struggling to get handheld shots. I was just using the flash from the camera and I was having a few issues with that. So many of my handheld shots are not the sharpest, whereas that's not the problem with the lens, that's just a problem of the user. But the next two shots here are done with a tripod. You can see the moss here is really nice and crisp really sharp um, really quite nice looking image and then you can see as well with this final image this is actually of a thistle a thistle looked hairy to the naked eye you can see that the, the detail really nicely there are the hairs of the thistle and it just had a bit of dirt on it but at this macro level the dirt looks like kind of like small uh, quartz stones because it's so zoomed in so I also managed to get quite a few shots of insects. So if anyone's screaming about spiders or any kind of insect things, I will just skip ahead until later in the video. I'll put a timestamp up then so you can see how long to wait until uh, the, the pictures of the, the insects have gone. So despite being quite cold and just having snow last week, I did manage to find a few insects. None of the images looks particularly spectacular because all the insects in my part of the world at this time of year are really quite small. Um, there wasn't any large insects apart from a bumblebee which they got a few shots with but again I was doing that handheld so I had some real issues of ghosting with the flash. Um, I'll show you some images now so you can see what that looks like. So that didn't turn out too great but I did get some tripod images of some insects as well and I also managed to get an, some nice uh, tripod video as well because it was really sunny so I didn't need a flash and I managed to get some quite interesting shots using the video function of my G6 camera.
So these video shots are taken using pretty much a 2 times macro because my camera has an option where I can crop into the sensor and film 1080p at a 2 times crop. So these are more like a, a 2 to 1 macro images. But it came out really nice. That first uh, centipede you saw there, that's a reasonable size insect. But this millipede here is actually really, really small. Probably only 1 centimeter in length and probably just a millimeter across. And you can see there, it's really picked up some nice detail. And it's made some pretty nice video. So I was quite happy with that, especially as I'll be using this macro lens for some time lapse photography and potentially some video as work as well. So I'm quite happy with the, the video results that I've managed to get from this. So I'll now try and uh, review the image sharpness. I'm not a professional reviewer of lenses, but this is just my opinion on this lens. So at f2.8, the sharpness is pretty reasonable. It improves down to f.4, but then anything above f.4, we seem to start getting diffraction coming in. It's not too bad. You can probably go up to about f11 without any major problems. Past f11, especially at the smallest aperture for this at f22, it's pretty much unusable, very, very uh, diffuse because of that diffraction coming in there. So now I'm going to look at vignetting. So vignetting isn't as important in macro photography because normally you have the subject right in the middle of the, of the frame. But here at f.28 you can definitely see there's a little bit of vignetting going on. Stop that down to f.4, it's almost completely gone. And then on my micro four fours camera, at down at f5.6 I couldn't notice any vignetting. In any smaller aperture from that there's no sign of vignetting at all. But if you're using this on an APS-C sensor you'll probably find the vignetting will be slightly worse than it would be on a micro four thirds camera. So I'm now have a look at chromatic aberration. So zooming in to the center image here, there doesn't seem to be any chromatic aberration that I can see on this image. Now I'll go down to the bottom left hand corner. It's slightly out of focus so that blurriness is actually the focusing distance and I'll come into that later on about the focusing at a distance. But in the corners you can see there is some chromatic aberration but you can see I'm so zoomed in you can actually see the pixels of the image so certainly on my 16 megapixel image sensor this isn't an issue at all. So I would say this, this lens has actually got quite low chromatic aberrations and has relatively good image quality when it comes to chromatic aberration. So I'll now talk about the biggest weakness of this lens and that is the ability to use it as a multi-purpose short telephoto lens for, for portraits. So for those kind of things the, for the focus is really just so difficult you've only got a couple of millimeters turning on the focus dial to go from one meter up to infinity so trying to get anything in focus is really difficult. I've tried it a few times and a lot of the times it's just really hard to get anything in focus with that kind of focus ring. The other issue I was coming across with as I was noticing these kind of images that I was I was taking a greater distance that the contrast was a little bit lower on it and the colors were a little bit washed out. I wasn't sure why this was but I think what it is is when there's a lot of excess light coming into the lens from different angles it seems to wash out the image and I'll show you this photo I took facing into the sun. There's a very bright background and you can just see it's completely washed out the image. So if you're shooting this in, into a light source you're going to get a really low contrast washed out image. It's really not a good lens for that but if you're shooting macro with really bright lights behind you then those kind of macro images do seem to have reasonable contrast and colour in them. So that concludes my review of the, the Mica 60mm f2.8 macro lens. For my personal uses this is quite a handy lens, it's not too expensive, it's fully manual so I can do time lapses quite nicely and it's got a really nice quality build. So if you're looking for a manual macro lens for an APS-C or micro four thirds camera and you want a quite a high uh, quality build quality then this is probably a reasonable lens to go for especially for the price of it. When it comes to general purpose photography though I would say you really want to probably not use this for that. The, the focus is too difficult to use. Anything really past one meter in distance and also with the problems of, of bright light in the background you're going to get quite a washed out image. So it's a great as a little macro lens as I say but apart from that it's not really a, a very useful lens for, for many other things. So that's all for my review. As I say not really a kind of video that I normally do. I'm normally a gardening channel but if you want to subscribe you'll probably see some time lapse footage and a lot more macro Macro shots coming up in the next few months that I'll be using this lens for and it'll be interesting to see how small I can get with the, the macro time lapses because I've only done normal time lapses I've not done uh, macro plant time lapses so I'll try and get some really small plants maybe even see moss growing that'll be quite interesting to see I think.